that this batch is now ready for dispatch, it is already manufactured. So one batch is ready for promotion. So can we bring about a change in itself by saying that people will definitely be qualifying for promotion because they have put in seniority, but will be subjected to some other vigorous test. And that will bring about one significant change which we are trying to introduce. Second, will be important thing will be how can we bring about some people in the government should be able to go out and work in other sectors. They must be able to work private sector, they must be able to work in the NGOs. Like there are certain ministries where people should work in NGOs. Ministry for Social Welfare. Ministry which actually deals only with NGOs. Why they should, people should not work. People from sports field, sports administration can come here, Ministry of Sports. Or people can go to multilateral agencies and can work there for some time. And same number of people that go out, we must be able to bring in same number of people from the same sectors back into the government. So five years, somebody comes from Tata Steel and works in government. And same time, some person goes and works in Tata Steel. What happens is, we'll understand the problems of each other far better. Tata Steel is always complaining that government doesn't understand about our concerns. And government is saying Tata Steel is insensitive to public policy. This type of bridge will be, this type of gap will be breached once we have this interaction with more, more people. NGOs, they are the ones who work for the social welfare ministry. The ministry works through them mainly. If they also come and work here and spend some time, this could be one major change that can be introduced. I'm not talking about this as a minister. I'm talking to you only as former adjunct professor of this institute and saying what could be the changes that should be brought about. At political leadership, we of course, we are working on and we must bring in a complete change in which the elections are conducted. The government spending of election is to be really look into. The entire aspect of creating leaders by way of process of election, that process itself has to undergo a change, which our Prime Minister has already appealed to all the opposition leaders and said, let us have a proper understanding so we can do it. The second issue, which is very important, is can we not have election on the same day. We have said one nation, one election. Just imagine if you have elections right from today in Maharashtra, I was coming from Maharashtra, I'm going there for some time before I go to Delhi tomorrow. There's election. Now the municipal corporate election, then there is a Jilla Parishad election. Just before that, there was another round of Jilla Parishad election or the local municipal council election. So from Maharashtra, you cannot do any public announcement. You cannot take any policy decision because elections are in process. Then it will happen in somewhere else. Now, of course, four or five states are going for elections, a different thing. Then will be general elections. So election after election. So we are going from one election to another election. So just imagine in US, in 2020, when will be the day of the president's election is known today? Why 2020? 2120. Election for US government, presidential election also will be known today. For all congressmen, which Congress is elected every two years, the senators are elected every six years. Every Congress election is known today. Every senator's election, every governor's election date is known today. Every sheriff's election, everything is known today. Can we not think about a system whereby we can do this by bringing in so many changes, which will affect society in a significant way because firstly, we'll save the cost of election. Secondly, during election, we cannot take decision, but more importantly, even if we want to do, we'll always keep election in mind before taking decision, even six months before election. So why not we think about one election one day, so that will be able to bring public policy in a much better manner. We'll also give a stability to the government, to the elected office. People will know that this is my next time. We never know otherwise what's going to happen. There are certain issues, of course. For example, what happens if there is a assembly, the government loses majority. What happens? There is a solution to that. In fact, Mr. El Kadwani had pointed out some time back that we can have a system wherein no confidence motion when it is moved in the parliament or in the assemblies. You can always say that you can always pass a no confidence against the present chief minister or the prime minister, provided you come out with an alternative candidate for the post to be occupied when that confidence motion, no confidence motion is passed. This will bring about a proper structure, so there will not be dis dissolution of assembly. There will be another government that can come into a place. So we can actually bring about this one single change can really bring about a total change in the style of governance in many ways. Of course, we are working on governance.
by making it more transparent. I'll give you an example of railways. When I was a, became railway minister, we used to spend 30, 40,000 crores a year annually. Last year, we made it 1 lakh crore. The current year, 1 lakh 21,000 crore. And 1718, the budget will be presented on 1st of February. I cannot give the number today because that's the parliament's prerogative, but it will be far more than the previous years. So just imagine, in three years, we have spent almost 3 lakh crores than what is to be only 30,000 30, crores a year. And that too in a 100% transparent manner. Every expense that we are doing now, we are going eat and drink, including worse content. We are trying to do eat and drink. We are trying to bring in complete change in terms of even there are certain possibilities. Like there was a um, RDSO. People say that, you know, it does not allow new technology to come in, new ideas to come in. So we are creating a new organ called Sresta, which will really ensure that only role of R&D will be taken away. New technologies can be properly developed, properly encouraged. And that again is done in a completely transparent manner. So to have a profound impact on business and society through governance, it has to be completely transparent. Number two, it should be participatory. Because if we believe that I believe that I know everything about everything, that's the beginning of a problem for the country as well as the government. We must admit that there are so many new things happening. So we must have interaction with people to frame in a public policy. That's what I did when I was a minister for environment and forest. We were trying to devise a policy, a new legislation called biodiversity law. And the only country which had passed the biodiversity law before us was Costa Rica, a very small country with, of course, high biodiversity. And we had signed the bio biosafety, biodiversity convention. So if you are not passed the law, we are very susceptible to probably biosafety issues and other issues. So we had to pass the law. So what we did was, I called all the NGOs, and there are different kinds of NGOs related to this. There are certain NGOs in biodiversity who believe that human rights are important. So we should not allow people to be taken out, the tribals, etc. There are people who believed that biodiversity is so important that it should not be touched at all. So therefore, there are the conservationist type of people who believed in that. Then there are people who believed in agrobiodiversity also to be introduced into this. There are many, many opinions. So what we did was, we called all of them, knowing their opinions, knowing the contradiction in each other. Because every person who is going to give an opinion for human rights is actually contradicting the contention of the other NGO, which is talking about conservation. And therefore, we brought all of them together. My secretary of then, Mr. Vishwanath Anand, was extremely worried. He said, sir, there is going to be a problem because so many different opinions. I said, let us try. We drafted the law, first draft, by three and a half hours of open discussion. It's like an open parliament. And then that was kept on the website. Of course, it took some more time. I was shifted to other ministries. But we created a draft, first draft, of a bill on which we have no other knowledge. Because the only other country which I made was Costa Rica, small country. And therefore, we had to do it with complexities that India has, with a huge biodiversity we possess, with a huge population which is dependent on that. So participatory changes are extremely important, and that could happen. In fact, right now, what I'm doing is we are having about 20, 25 different kinds of roundtables in which we are inviting all kinds of stakeholders devoted to a particular subject. Tomorrow is on electrification. We had recently on environmental issues and energy issues of all kinds. We are going to have one on technology, one on different, different kinds, where we tell them what we are doing and we get the inputs. And whatever we are doing and whatever the inputs we are getting, we want to circulate it to as many people as possible globally. So we can get more ideas. Now just imagine if we make a policy based on such participation, it will have a huge impact based and it will help us, help business, help society in a significant way. So I think governance has to be first transparent and also it has to be stable because if you make a policy which is going to change every day, it is not a policy at all. So we must think about that in a proper particular manner. In fact, one of the good examples of that is the Electricity Act, which I was luckily with a minister which we got it done. That law, again, was done through such participatory process. So many new ideas came in. And in fact, people still hail it as one of the best possible legislation on the subject anywhere in the world. So that is the example of getting, reaching out to people, getting their participation, understanding their concerns, what are the issues that can come in, and think forward and try to change it. So therefore, I think there is no doubt about the fact that governance is the most important issue, which is going to really bring about this transformational change that we are looking at. 
and the transformational change without governance is also difficult because irrespective of the leadership the business leaders we have produced one of the finest leaders like muturam we have produced finest technologists and scientists like dr kasturangan but if the governance public governance will not encourage that leadership to take it to the logical end what are the potential of that leadership we will not be able to do the transformation that we want so what is the transformation we want to change it beyond recognition we want to not just change from one end to another like this it should be one product which is transformed into something so different that it is difficult to recognize that it was same product the china i have been there 20 or 29 i am not as a minister of course now as a but i used to go there very often i used to be on 16 different global organization on so many countries strategic dialogue i used to go there first time i went there there was only bicycles and now if when i go when i went there two to and half maybe three years ago there's hardly any bicycle so that's a change of course i'm not saying good change or bad change but i'm talking about transformation a country which had so many poor and now they can boast of having the highest number of not billionaires alone but highest number of rich people most of the chinese can claim to have house so these are the changes that have happened in one generation prime minister things is something which we should try to do not being about incremental change and in that context so many decision that a prime minister prime minister taking should be seen in that context which will have profound impact on both business and society one the recent issue of demonetization it has created some issues i'm sure which we will address but it is one thing by one sweep we are making sure that all our unaccounted household savings are coming to the system we need savings without savings you cannot make investment otherwise you have to keep borrowing all the time and even if you borrow you have to repay it so for repayment also you need savings so savings will drive the growth rate that's how it happened in china china saving rate is close to 50% so we can actually need savings which will happen the banking system will have more resources so obviously they will be able to lend more they will be able to spur economic activity in a significant way look at other initiative make in india this again will change the way the business is done in india rather than dependent on imports in fact one estimate shows that going by the same trend that was prevailing earlier we would have been the largest importer of electronics in the world largest so we would have supported the global industry i don't know we are talking about gold today as a big challenge a drain on foreign exchange the electronics would have become that so make in india is another important issue clean india which also will transform this is not our habit of making the environment unclean but it's happened over a period of time if you don't change it it is also going to bring down so many economic issues it is going to bring down the tourist arrivals it is going to increase the cost of public health it is going to put more and more resources at Uh, the, for just to clean what what has been the mess has been created so why not we keep it clean rather than first make it unclean and then make it better so these are the many transformation issue digital india just imagine the whole world is going to be digital in the next few years time it's a great opportunity for india to bring about all this public paradigm shift through digital op operations of all kinds whether it's governance whether it's business whether it's day to day transaction this itself will bring about a real transformational change rather than waiting for incremental change that will happen over a period of time and people will change over a long period so i think this is a great opportunity i really wish you all the best and i'm sure so many of your particip some of your participants will really be transforming not only themselves but the organizations but also the country in the process and we will have then a real change in india which is what we are looking for so thank you very much congratulations to all of you wishing you little belated happy new year also belated sankranti but i have to go and catch my flight so i am sorry about it in fact the program that we had uh, we are actually there on time but because of certain uh, late arrivals we had to delay it a bit otherwise i could have been here in time to speak to you little longer so thank you very much congratulations all the best to you cuz mr suresh prabhu is is our adjunct professor we could first request him and he said yes then we also had a right to give a subject to him and we knew that he is the only one with his vast experience who can do justice he accepted the subject and you know in a scintillating manner and with his vast experience he has covered it 
His time is short, so may I request Ms. Sanjana to propose a vote of thanks to Honorable Minister. On behalf of all the participants of the 31st Executive Program, members of the Niaz family and other distinguished members in the audience, I have the honor of thanking our Honorable Minister, Sri Suresh Prabhu, for giving us a very thought-provoking and motivational talk on how government can be an instrument for bringing about transformational change through active by involving active participation as well as through task management. I also thank Dr. Baldev for chairing this session. Thank you, everybody.